Hey guys, hi, I'm back with another video. Um, this time, I'm heating up my steamer all the way. So this time we're gonna, I'm gonna steam some clothes and I'm gonna talk to you about consistency with listing on eBay and how, well, cross posting to Poshmark, right? It's important well, for me to have that cross posting because if you watched in the last video, I talked about how sometimes my sales will go down on one platform and they'll shoot up on the other. It's actually very interesting and it's happened the whole time now that I've been reselling, which is about six weeks, eight weeks. And like I said, I had a, tour, a store in 2010, I first opened, I was very successful right off the bat. My first year I made $100,000 worth of sales and I had five years like that. And then I kind of went into um, doing it part-time. I never actually left selling on eBay or selling online in general because I went to Amazon, Etsy, and then Poshmark. I started my store in 2017. So I have had my Poshmark store for almost five years. I can't do math in my head, but I have today hit 10,000 followers. I'm also a Posh ambassador. So that helps when cross posting. In fact, all of this is set up for me to walk into, which is a little bit different than someone who's starting right out. But I want to talk to you about what that's like to start out just fresh out of, you know, thinking, you know what, I want to be, I want to do that. I want to shop and resell and uh, cherry pick items or whatever it is. I remember when I saw someone doing this on eBay, it was um, a store that sold mainly shoes. That's why I was, I've always been a shoe seller. Um, I was floored. I didn't realize that this was 2010. Okay. Mind you, this is a while ago. I was like, I've been trying to make money online in a million different ways. And I had no idea there was something that I liked doing already thrifting and that I could actually make money on by posting it on a online site. Now at that point, eBay was the only one that was certainly could use Craigslist, but that wasn't my, my dad had sold on eBay for years as a way to make money for him. And I kind of never took it seriously. So and someone gave me a purse. I had already thought about like, I need to sell items. Like I kept saying, I'm gonna start like a flea market. I was gonna go to the flea market and start selling stuff because I wanted to make money outside of what my job was, which was a veterinary technician. And I worked doing that for a while, right? That's what I get, went to college for. Um, I had a beautiful career in it. I worked in the animal field for a long time. In fact, in 2008 or nine, I was in Colorado Springs working as a veterinary technician. And that's kind of what fueled me to figure out how to make more money because I was pretty boxed in with a certain wage. And I realized or learned that I can't really live like that. Like it just doesn't vibe with me. I want to be able to make money. I need to, I'm like a manifestor generator type person. And I need to be able to have some sort of control of the flow because money is energy. I'm also a spiritualist. Um, I was raised by like a meditator and she's still, my mother is still does spiritual, the spiritual work. Certainly I do too. I meditate, I have a practice, all that stuff. So that helps me stay sane while I'm uh, kind of doing new things and, you know, trying new things. And I remember going real crazy about eBay feedback in the beginning. I mean, having it ruin my day, my life, my week, my month, if I got a negative and I went, it was really hard. I remember going through it. So it, it is like YouTube. If you want to do something that you're going to put yourself out there, someone's going to make some dumb remark and, or maybe a, a remark that makes me reflect on what I'm doing. Right. I can always learn from people too. And I have been, I've been learning about all kinds of new brands like this brand, Athleta. I never really picked it up before. Like I never did comps before. I just learned what other resellers were doing and then I put it up there and it started to sell. Now, someone gave me a purse. I really wanted to do something different with my life and myself and whatever. I was like dying to get out of this field that I didn't really, you know, I knew I wanted to be my own boss. I had already been trying to sell online for a while and, you know, couldn't find what was working, gonna work for me. So, I took some funky pictures of this purse, listed it on an auction, and it sold with a bunch of bidders and a bunch of watchers for like 98 bucks or like 108 bucks. 
was some blue leather hobo or whatever. And I was like, what the fuck? Because I had never made more than like $25 online in my whole career of trying to be an entrepreneur and sell online. I'm telling you, I tried all kinds of weird things and products and social media sites and I don't know, referring people and all these things. And so, okay, my first 98 bucks online turned into, I'm gonna do that again. So I kept going to the thrift store, which was, I told you I lived in a really affluent neighborhood in Colorado Springs. And there was a Goodwill right down the street and then an Ark right down the street, like literally right down there. And then another one is just everywhere. So I started going, so I went to the Goodwill and I said, you know what? I know what brands are cool or whatever. Like I know what, cause it wasn't like I had, I remember having a smartphone, but I didn't do comps back then. It's almost like I knew what brands were cool cause my brother was, a re like he did swap meet stuff and he was also a drug addict unfortunately. So we, we call those tweakers, <laughs> he was a tweaker and he ran a swap meet thing, you know, like he kind of showed me that I could make money anywhere, especially on selling like the clothes. He would buy stuff from the thrift store, like Gucci flip flops. He had like Gucci shirts and suits. He had a Yves Saint Laurent suit. Okay. So I started going to the thrift store and, and I found a white house, black market, all wool, red holiday, like jacket. And I was like, six ninety nine. I don't want to pay that. It was 2010. And I was like, that's way too expensive. And I don't know if it's going to sell and whatever. And I was just being random with everything. I wasn't listing on any uh, consistency or anything like that. This was like my first or second, you know, sale. Or I think I went into my closet and grabbed anything designer anybody had ever given me that I never wore that I was like hoarding back then. I think I had a few bags and a cashmere sweater that this woman gave me. That ended up selling for like $75. And I was like, whoa, okay. So you mean I can make money like this? And that was it. I went right down to the Goodwill. I had like $1,200 say in the savings because I was trying to save for a down payment for a new car. Because I was really tired of driving this old car I was driving. So, you know, desire is everything. That's a spiritual teaching. So I was like, oh, I can't. And I remember on Halloween, like my husband went and, and left me because I had to work all weekend because I had to work every holiday as a veterinary technician. And my body was hurting my back. There's a lot of chemicals, all kinds of stuff. So I was very motivated to be one of these online full-time resellers because I had seen people, there was obviously YouTube back then. So I was YouTubing other sellers and I found one that I really liked and I just copied, she had a blog and she would write about all the things that she did. And I was like, okay, there's nothing different between me and that person. I can do that and I'm going to do that. So it took like an intention and a desire, which is what everybody can have, right? Somebody's watching this with some kind of an <clears throat> intention and desire to change their work life or their destiny or whatever. Cause I'm, I've been working the same job, consulting job for 10 years and I'm just really needing a change. So, um, I just started reselling online again, but back to how it started in the beginning and how it became consistent. So I went down, got some things, and I knew that I could only spend like $75 a week or 50. Back then, I think I, my budget was $50 a week inventory, which is nothing, okay? Uh, I, I spend 150 right now just in this little um, kind of wheel I'm spinning. So, um, I had a budget of $75, $50, and I could not go over that. But I had a lot of items from my closet, and I was like, okay, you know. And back then, they just would, I would list them at auction, they would sell, just like the one I was, person I was watching. And I would pick up a lot of shoes that I, were, I was like, well, she sells these shoes all day long, I'm gonna sell these shoes. So I did exactly what she was doing. Basically, I copied her. And not like everything about what she did, well, she, she did free shipping, and I remember I went to the eBay, eBay convention in uh, 2012 or something, and her and I met, and I met a bunch of eBay sellers there. It was so much fun. I've never since been back to any kind of eBay convention or anything, but 
I did go to that one and I really, really enjoyed the success I had on eBay in the beginning. So basically I had this 50 bucks. I went down, I did my best to buy this White House Black Market red peat coat. Peat coat was one of the things I bought. There was a bunch of Ralph Lauren back then. I bought a bunch of like random Ralph Lauren sweaters. I didn't even know that wool was my target. Like, I didn't really know anything. I just knew that my mom wore White House Black Market or something and like it was a little expensive and I don't even remember doing comps. I just remember starting to understand watching other sellers talk about brands, just like people do today. That's why these Bolo videos or this sells or that sells or what sold for me, I've been doing those videos because that's a great way for people to learn about brands. In fact, I watched her, I went to her sold listings. Like I was sneaky, I was like completed listings. Let's see what's going on. And I wanted to know what things were selling and for how much. And so I spent hours and hours and hours on eBay. Once I figured out, so here comes the kicker. It's kind of a godsend. Somehow I got laid off my job as a veterinary technician. Okay, they were experiencing, a, I was working an emergency and the doctor, I was you know, the most recent hire and I was doing kind of a specialized position that was like invented, you know, to have a little bit more hospitality for the guests or, you know, patients, parents, the people that bring their animals in. And it was, um, you know, a, like super late at night and all this stuff. And I was just like, oh, I don't even really like this job, but it was paying the bills, right? We have to pay the bills. And we can't just fantasize about being resellers. We have to do the, put in the work. So basically, I was already doing my little routine. Oh yeah, and I woke up every day super early with my husband because I would just, he would wake me up. And so I would just get up and I would be like a little bit irritated because I normally got up for work and worked sometime during the day and sometimes at night. So I was like, okay, well I was awake and I was irritated. I was like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do with myself today? And I thought, huh. I'm gonna sit down, I'm not gonna go back to bed. I'm gonna sit down and list. And, cause I remember thinking about it. I'm like so tired, I'm like, I'm so tired, I should go back to bed. And then something said, no, you should list. And so I went and I listed five items. And that was the heyday, things would sell. It's almost like all that you'd list, you'd sell. And I made a mistake in the last video. I said I sold 100 items a month, that was wrong. I sold 100 items a week. Seven to 10 a day, seven days a week. So. Um, 100 items a week, not 100 items a, a month. That was a mistake. So, um, because I did do around $8,000 was my average. So how did I go from $75 investing a week to 800 to 1,000? I Inventory was 1,000, free shipping was about 800. So that's cost of goods. And, and then everything else underneath that is like $1,500 for a year for office space or something like that. Because back then I used my house, this is my office over here, and I write the whole thing off. Like I, $500 for my office, whatever. So um, taxes aren't that hard. I should probably do a tax video because it's actually pretty easy. So basically I got laid off. I was like still waking up in the morning because I didn't know what to do with myself. And so I started to list. Then I realized, oh, what should I do after listing? Oh, why don't you pack the items that shipped the day before? And so I was laid off from work. So I was like, okay, let me figure out how I'm gonna get a new job or whatever. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I didn't even know, well, I knew from watching my other resellers that this could become a full-time thing if, if I could figure out what I needed to sell. And I was like, I bet you I could figure that out. That's not very hard, right? Because I went through her solds and other people's solds. I would go to like, I'd filter between price. I'd go to eBay, filter between price, like 59 to $159. What was selling in that, that price range? I filtered by price and learned brands that way. I remember that, that's how I did comps, but I never did comps in the store. This is a new thing, like, oh, I'm gonna get 100% sell-through rate. So that White House Black Market jacket along with the other things was probably like $50. You know, I probably bought some dance clothes because those were selling really good back then. And a couple other pairs of shoes. I bought shoes, 
probably, oh yeah, the Ralph Lauren sweaters. I remember selling a lot of that and a couple J. Crew sweaters. I just didn't even know. I knew about a couple brands. So I was like, okay. And I did a lot of research. So what changed for me was that day that I decided to do the listing, packing, shipping, post office, come back, chillax. And then I actually went and sourced a little bit more because I had sold three items. So I realized, well, I should probably reinvest all this money. Now I had $1,200 saved to buy a new car for a down payment on a new car. You know, I had been trying to save while I was at work. And I lived, I used that money to pay my bills while I pushed my eBay store uphill. So I realized that I should probably do that same thing every day. And that consistency took me from the lower end of the spectrum where I was selling, you know, one to two items a day, like I am right now to the consistency, which my favorite reseller talks about. She says that she lists about 20 a day. She sells about 20 a day. That's what I was doing. That's completely feasible, completely something that can happen again because it's a numbers game and it's a knowledge game too. You know, it's, it's a wheel. And we, I have to get in and pedal every day, but there's something about, you know, the, the controlled chaos that we all love, all us resellers, the find, the hunt. I used to want to be a fashion designer, so like, why wouldn't I want to do this, you know, holding designer clothes and having really cool designer clothes in my hands? Um, if I can't create it, then I want to manipulate it or work with it, right? So... Um, I started listing every day. That was what changed and I didn't stop. That was how it grew. So that's it. It's basically a knowledge base, doing research, listening to other resellers, talk about what they're selling because that is how your, your understanding is going to grow. In fact, I had never heard of what's called a Filson garment. My <clears throat> reseller I'm watching, she was, this is really wrinkled. She was talking about finding it at the bins and charging $175 for a pair of pants, Wilson garment wool pants. So I was like, what? What is that? I need to, I need to know about that. And I found a shirt the other day. I have it literally listed in my store right now for the most, it's the most expensive item I'm selling right now. And um, literally when I say that I mean it, it's, I did the comps because it's a Filson, vintage Filson field jacket, like Wichita wool or something like. It has this whole long title that I had to find and re uh, research and do comps on. And there was one that sold for $450. So I was like, what the? Now, I am gonna talk about it in a video once it sells because it already has like five watchers or whatever. 40 views, five watchers. So it keeps pumping out watchers to, you know, offers to watchers for 369. So it's crazy. I mean, I had no idea that brand was even, it's like a Pendleton, you know, definitely like a Pendleton. And you never find that kind of stuff anymore. I mean, I'm just starting out, you know, rummaging through men's clothes profusely, but I would say that I haven't found anything that expensive yet and or that valuable on because it's vintage. It's this crazy McKenna, McKenna wool field jacket. It's like from the seventies, I think. I researched the tag a little bit and because I did the comps according to its vintage, you know, adding a hundred dollars because it's or like $300 because it's vintage. Because it's just a basic wool. I mean, it's not basic. It's obviously special. But uh, someone's going to buy it, hopefully, for this 359 right? So one time I sold a Starbucks mug from a yard sale. Because I did it all. I did. Uh, I didn't just do clothes and shoes. I was into, like, yard sailing and getting anything and reselling what are those collectibles, which is insane. I don't recommend it, although it's so much fun. Like I, I've done it all, electronics. I mean, I've, 
And then I landed on clothes and shoes because they're the easiest to pack and ship. And they used to be cheap to pack and ship. Now they're expensive. What makes my shipping price go up is shoes because shoes are always heavy. I mean, you could you used to be able to ship things for the padded flat rate envelope for just, just like $5. So shipping's gone up because of gas and everything. This is that Barefoot Dreams cardigan. Look at how pretty that is now that I steamed it. This should get me 50 bucks. This is um, kind of more, you know, or just along the lines of the Eileen Fisher stuff. It must be a catalog that everybody likes because I've never heard of it. But um, consistency was key and the intention and a plan. So I realized, okay, I've been spending $50 a week. I'm making 1200 a month. So I, let me try to spend a hundred dollars a week. And then it went to 200. And then I was up about 250 to 300 a week sourcing because I was selling $8,000 average a month. So that made it completely worth it. And if you do the numbers on all that, there's plenty left over after the grand goes into the best part, which is thrifting. And my brother used to help me steam and clean. He was my inspiration. Rest his soul, rest in peace. He died of a drug overdose in 2019, January. So, um, so sad. He was supposed to go to a rehab the night before and he decided to lock himself in the bathroom instead. And he was staying at my dad's. So unfortunately my dad was the one who had to go through most of this heartbreak and find him. So my brother used to steam and clean and he inspired me. And basically I think that like, it's gonna be four years soon since he passed. And I've been doing this consulting business for a long time, but it's not like what I really love. Obviously I really love to thrift and I miss it. Like I'm right back to like a happy place. I feel like I'm not freaking out about being boxed in around money because I can't live like that. Like I like to feel the feeling of being my own boss. And yeah, it's, this is tedious and I don't really like steaming and cleaning, but at the same time, I don't like having to do a lot of things or whatever. This isn't so bad after all, you know, I don't find it sooner or later. I probably would hire someone to do some of these tasks that I just don't like as much, you know, cause this is not so much worth my time. I'd rather be sourcing, 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 and sourcing a lot. Remember this is that wool rich, this is a wool rich cottage core, grandma core, all those things, fair isle, all wool, really pretty cardigan. I comp this in the store using some of those keywords because I'm not sure how wool rich is performing. Some of it performs really well, some of it doesn't. But if you do the comps on this, first of all, it's the wool that I look for, right? I'm into a wool thing right now because it's freezing where I live. I live in Colorado and it's today it's actually 57 degrees, which is very nice. But the other day it was snowing and it was 17. So people around here wear wool. I'm allergic to wool because I'm from California. So like literally, I, I swear to God, and as snobby as this sounds, I can only wear cashmere, Meh. but I find it all the time. So I have a lot of cashmere sweaters that I wear and stuff. And they're great, they feel so soft, but I wear, you know, it's cold outside. Not so much today. I can see the golf courses open across the street, but because I live a, like alongside a golf course. So, um, I'm, let me finish the, there's a really nice Eileen Fisher boiled wool showed this in my last video got this for half off nice new tag like a new er style so basically this time around i'm doing the same thing right because i figured if i had my 50 dollars a week if i doubled that then couldn't my sales double i kind of like the price is right when you spin the wheel if you spin it hard enough it's going to go around all the time and hit the dollar <laughs> right and I had an example of that. I had a YouTuber that I watched. She blogged, she YouTubed. So I started YouTubing and I had, I didn't have thick skin back then at all. So I had to stop YouTubing right away because it's pretty, pretty nasty out here. People can get pretty nasty for no reason. But all we're doing is trying to 
share ourselves and give and help. But, you know, that's this play, this world we live in, this place. Uh, that's what we call it, a spiritualist, this material realm. So anyways, back to the material realm. Um, I decided that I was going to list consistently again. And this is what people say. This is how you have the success. Yeah, it's frantic in the beginning because you have to learn a lot of the brands. But if you're into it, you already want that. And so, like, there's a pull or a draw. And so you'll spend hours, like I've been doing, listening to resellers online um, on YouTube because I want to know new brands like uh, the Athleta sweater that I picked up and the Spanx that I got. Those are worth a lot of money and I never would have even seen the Spanx because they don't look like, they don't look like Spanx. They're, sorry, I didn't even know what Spanx looked like. I could probably get $60 for the sweater because this retails for probably $350. I mean, if you want to go to the Island Fisher website, and I did that recently because I was like, what would this go for? It was insane. They have a, like a pack of wool, beautiful burnt orange alpaca wool long jacket for a mere $695, just in case you have that lying around to pick up a jacket, which is some people do. That's, you know, everyone lives in a different layer financially. So mine is more like picking them up at the thrift store and then pretending, you know, but I wouldn't wear this. This isn't my style, obviously, but I can appreciate it 100% because it's a very nice garment. So as you can see, I mean, maybe you can't, but I have clothes on every little hanger, every little wall. I have to get organized. And up here, yesterday, Sunday, I spent eight hours. I worked all day. I spent eight hours working. But I took about uh, two, three hours in the garage, organized all my shoes. Now I have them in uh, alphabetical order. And I have a drawer system where I have like two sets of very large plastic drawers and they're all labeled in alphabetical order and they go down both sides, men's and women's. So it's full, it's full now, no more shoes for a while. But um, I don't really wanna limit myself. I don't wanna limit my belief systems. I don't wanna limit my intention. Like I had a negative outlook. That's another way to succeed is don't let anything stop you right? Like what people say or what people think or whatever somebody's opinion might be, <clears throat> especially, <clears throat> sorry, your family or my family, they don't care what I do anymore. <laughs> I'm just, they're like, okay, you're doing well. Yeah. Okay. They don't want to hear my stories about being this entrepreneur anymore. Cause they're like, oh, you're going selling, you're selling a light again. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah. But you know, I bought a house with I'm like, they know I can make money. They know I can pull a rabbit out of my arse or whatever, because I, I do. And I end up changing a lot, you know, like I sold on eBay for a while and I told you I did, um, LuLaRoe. <laughs> that was awesome. I mean, awful. <laughs> it was an experience, that's for sure. But you know, trends change and like now it just feels right to come back and I saw some of my old resellers, they're leaving finally. They're like, eBay, it's all this and that and the other. See, I won't even say it out loud because I don't wanna put anything negative into the space that universe wants to give me and that I can receive. Because <clears throat> that's a spiritual truth, like it is. You can't, like intention plus desire plus action, right, some action. And then the manifestation of the desire birthed into the universe becomes a reality. And we're walking there. I'm walking there to mine and I'm creating it as I walk, whether um, I realize that or not, because it was a phenomenon. My store did such great numbers within just a few months, like within four months, I wasn't even looking back. I was like, wow, I, I was making so much money. I made $100,000 in my first year. That's what I mean about being successful. And I was the first one you know, my parents are seekers, spiritual seekers. My dad went to India. They're not, they didn't go to college. <laughs> they went to the college of spiritual gurus, which is a totally different thing. And I grew up in a different way, like I'm not around a lot of money. Although the spiritual group my mom's in now has a lot of money in it, which is where I get some of the clothes that I get. She gave me an amazing rag and bone jacket, like a little motorcycle jacket. I put it on, I was like, oh, keeping this one. 
not selling it. So she brings, because the lady she works for is really, really wealthy. So that's where the kind of like, she hands her down the clothes. And now I can, because she actually had, gave me a bag and I was like, what am I going to do with this? I'm not selling online. She's like, I don't know. Give it to your friends. And I'm like, so then I ended up going down there and selling the bag that she gave me online. And I made like $350 off four pairs of shoes that she had given me. I was like, so expensive. Paul Green, some Bruno Macaulay Calderellian, some Italian brand, and then, um, cute pair of boots that are like a snow boot the Aztec snow boot God, it's like those were, they went for $185 so it was just like wow okay so once you start opening up to yourself to like <clears throat> receiving people start like giving you things like I was amazed that's how I really started was people started giving me things like I said I took that $50 to the store and then I doubled it and then I made it more this is a cute little Tahari um, Murano Wool 1X. So it's a um, large size. And so I recommend if you guys are starting out, if you really want to do this full time, it's going to take six months, three to six months to consider anything like leaving your job or changing your income or, or you know, seeing the results of listing consistently five to seven items a day. I would put two in a bank of draft to go get them into the readiness for Saturday and Sunday when you're, Saturday certainly I'm sourcing and Sunday I don't feel like listing and pushing into listing. So I have already listed seven a day, five go live, two go in the bank. That's working for me right now. I can do that while I work my other job because I'm consulting on the phones and I've been doing it for so long, I can kind of multitask. <laughs> Don't tell my clients that. So I'm listing while I'm, you know, telling them about their, it's a spiritual consulting business. So, and I, you know, the truth is, is I love it and I want to keep doing it, but I don't really want to help people emotionally anymore. That's, that's harder than this. <laughs> and you know, I want to feel more freed up to kind of like, I hold people and that's, that's what spiritual work is all about is I have, I have to be there for them or hold them in the, the capacity that I can. And right now, you know, after my brother passed and all those things, I, I've just been having a hard time extending myself to others because what I didn't say is my father, ouch, my father also passed 10 months later. So that was hard. And uh, I still did the consulting, but I was always like, what am I going to do? I need out of this. I need to do something else because I needed to just do something for me. Again, so the cool part is that I really get to feel close to my brother when I do this because, like I said, he was the original thrifter. Um, he wore these disco outfits in high school with the tags on. Back then, we could get all these cool, uh, what were those with the feet print on them? Mm, can't remember, but they became so popular at school just because, like, paying 10. We had the two little feet right here. God, if we had one of those right now, I'd probably go for a grand. Cause they're just, they were just some something from the nineties that you found from the seventies. So they were vintage in the nineties. Like probably hang 10 shirt would be worth so much. Cause we would find them. I found them in the 2010. I, I sold a few hang 10 shirts. They were still around in the thrift stores. So, or people had finally given them back or whatever, or, you know, like that Filson garment shirt that I found, I did not know it was going to go for the cost that I did not know it was going to go for what it did. So if you're considering steaming or not steaming, I would say steam because this is so much nicer than not steam. Then I can take a photograph of it just like that. I do change the hanger. I hang it on a wall. I don't use a mannequin anymore. I'm trying to go for simple, but you know, steady. So I don't have to feel like I'm constantly, um, doing the same thing. Cause I do get bored easy. A lot of us, you know, I have OCD. I know that for sure. <laughs> that I'm working with. So, um, here's this really cool, I'll do this blazer in a second, but I see an even blazers because I want everything to look nice when I photograph it. Like I'm not too picky about a mannequin anymore. And I don't think you should be if you're just starting out. 
I think you should just get like two ring lights. You know, that's what I'm using for my setup. I'm not using these big lights anymore. No mannequins, no fluff, no real like, I'm just buying the best items I can find, focusing on listing, trying to get a draft bank going, being consistent, uh, also having a positive attitude, right? That's really important because and following someone who's already succeeding to the degree that you want to see yourself succeed. So I follow a posher, sorry, an online seller because there's two platforms. So it's just online selling now, which I like. I follow someone who does $5,000 a week in sales between the two platforms. So I'd like to succeed like that. I'd like to have $5,000 worth of sales because I could hire somebody to do all this, you know, <clears throat> process. Because it's not just steaming, it's a bunch of shoes too. So they don't have to just, you know, but it's photographing, steaming, cleaning. And I would be in charge of listing because that's pricing and that's pretty big. And that's the final stand before it goes out to the buyer, like checking to see. I just want to be cover my ass, you know. This stuff is pretty easy to do by outsourcing. And I'm willing to do that because I'm willing to make the money on... I could source three, four times a week. This is gonna ruin my paint on the wall. I already know it. I have to like start turning it this way. I keep forgetting. So let's see. Yeah, there's some more blazers. All right, guys. So um, in the next video, we're gonna talk about the practicalities of doing that again, like setting up that kind of a business, the business model of, you know, not worrying about what each item costs either, but worrying about more the average price per item so I do buy some overpriced and then we get the underpriced items too. And then that averages out for me for about $5 per item. I've watched a lot of reselling videos. This is pretty much the average that I'm seeing. So if you're starting out, I would take $100 and invest it just like you would in any, any other business. Maybe $200, get yourself some lights. Uh, that's about it. Your camera phone, your smartphone is gonna be fine. So basically, starting out is inexpensive. If you wanna do men's clothes, research somebody doing men's clothes. If you wanna do women's clothes, follow a, a buyer, that's really good. That's, this is really hard to steam. I don't know why, it's silk, that's why. But follow a buyer, that seller that's doing men's clothes. So I watch two resellers because I wanna know if there's any men's brands out there I should watch out for that are new. And technically, I haven't heard any. It's kind of like the same with men's brands. They stay pretty classic. So, you know, there's a lot of guides out there. I don't know, I'm thinking about doing a guide, a brand's guide, or how to start an eBay business from beginning to end and having it be a small video series. Because I'm telling you, it's, it's, a, it's a succession of doing things in a certain way, not giving up, being consistent, finding the right brands, having the right attitude, and account health, you know, making sure you go to the post office every day. Because you want to certainly at some point get top rated seller and stay in the, you know, you want to have listings going every single day and you want to have a budget for your, uh, like let's say you want to list 50 items a week, 50 times five, you know, please don't make me do math in my head. But that's what your price per item would be. Unless you're going to the bins and you're getting a lot of things for, super cheap, half off, or anything like that. So what um, what I notice is that the bins here, they're in a certain one. I might go to another this week and check out a different one. I'm like, what just happened to my hand? My, this thing is so industrial. It's like an industrial steamer. It's a Jiffy, like 4,000. I'm sure they have like, so I bought this like eight, eight, at least 10 years ago. But it works like a champ, you know. I'm not gonna go out and spend another $500 on a industrial steamer right now. But um, I would recommend steaming, like I didn't at first, but it just doesn't look so great. Like, I mean, even back in the day, I didn't at first. Like, we always try to get away from it, you know? We're always like, ah, eh, ouch. I could get away with that, and then we realize, yeah, that looks so ugly. Why would anybody buy that? Because it does, buyers don't like seeing all that, um, all those wrinkles okay guys um i have a few more blazers to, to go through but i think that's all for now 
stay tuned for the next video. Like and subscribe if you want. I'm going to go over that as like a, uh, a whole plan, how I, how to start the eBay business from a hundred dollars. I mean, you could do, you know, $100, $200 for all the other spice, but we're going to really talk about that. And if you're wanting to do that, stay tuned and there'll be more videos like that. Thanks guys. See you next time.